Hi friends, Miss Amanda here. It's Miss Becky. So parents, this first little section um, is gonna be for you. We're just gonna reflect on our circle time, um, how we had you go on, how we ended it. We told you to go on YouTube and look up uh, the pancakes for breakfast story. Um, and then we mentioned about there not being like any words to the story and then your child was to make up the words and tell you and have that conversation with you on what they feel is happening on each page. So to help you with that in your packet of papers, um, there's this, this sheet. I don't know if you guys can see it too clear on our end, um, but it has like a little picture of what like the book looks like that you'll look at on YouTube. And then um, it just tells you um, about sequencing because the purpose of having the children like tell you what they feel is happening um you know it see it goes along with sequencing we're actually going to talk about sequencing here in just a couple of minutes um with a different activity so if you want to pull this sheet out look over it and then use it to help you um as you're listening to that story because it talks about having the children talk about picking out like the beginning the middle and the end so basically you're sequencing that story uh, from what's happening at the start, what's happening in the middle, and then what how the story ends. Um, so it just gives you um, all that little detail on the sheet. So. Okay, so um, we're going to do a sequence on the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So if you're not familiar with that story, go ahead onto YouTube and watch it with your children at home and that way they'll know the story so that they can do the sequence. Um, the art supplies that you'll need are scissors again and some crayons for this. And you're going to have this paper in your packet. So this is all different scenes from the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but of course they're not in order because the purpose of this is for your children at home to learn what the order of stories are. Which is the sequence. Which is the sequence, yes. So you're gonna get this paper out, and then you're gonna have your child color the picture. Then and you're, then you're gonna use your scissors yes. very cautiously, remember your scissor safety. To cut all the pictures of the sequence out. So your first, picture will be this one. So you can just lay them all out on the table for your children. Just in the order that they go. And then if you notice um, in the corner of your picture, there's these like little squares up here. This is where you're gonna number them. So number one will be the beginning of the story. Clear up until how many squares we have? Six. Six. Yes. So you're gonna number one, two, three, four, five, six in the order that the story goes by your pictures. Right. So after you watch the story, in the beginning of the story, you'll learn that Goldilocks was chasing a butterfly and she decided to leave her house. So that's the very first part of the story. So you'll have your child take their crayon and you can help them and then they'll write number one. Okay, so then they'll set that down. And then the second part of the story was Goldilocks went into the house and she saw some porridge sitting on the table. So she decided to start to eat the porridge. So you'll label this one as number two. So, so far, she went out of the house and then went in to eat the porridge. And then while she was in there, she got full. So she decided to sit down in a chair for a little while. So that will be number three. And then she got sleepy, so she decided to go upstairs and take a nap in the bear's bed. And then the bears decided to come home. Okay. I'm sorry, I did mess that up. Okay, first she, the bears came home. And then they discovered that Goldilocks was laying in the bed. Okay. So this will be number four. 
and this will be number five. And then once they decided she was in the bed, Goldilocks woke up and ran out of the house. <laughs> so that's how the sequencing will go. If you have any questions, please, you know, ask us and we can help you. So Goldilocks went out of the house and then she ate the porridge. And then she decided to sit in the chair. So that's one, two, and three. And then the bears came home and they discovered that she was upstairs sleeping in their bed. And then she ran out of the house. Okay. It would even probably be a good idea too that if you're not familiar with the story, like we said, to listen to it first on YouTube. But then like once you get this figured out in sequence, to even listen to it again and then follow along with the story with your sequence of yes. pictures uh, would also be really, really good. Yes. Um, just to like tie it all together. So another thing, um, there are certain ways like whenever um, you read, like, you know, you read, you know, like right to left, you know, stuff like that, turn the pages. Um, so in your packet, there's actually a reading checklist. Um, it looks like this. So, you know, as we know, the kiddos are little. Um, so they are beginning to learn to read, even the three-year-olds, um, by just modeling like different words and things is helping them build their vocabulary and watching, even just watching us read and how we're modeling that help will help them be able to read. So this is just a little checklist. Um, some of it might not be applicable right now to some of the kids, um, but it's just something just to go through and check their just yes or no questions. Um, so like I said, these are in your packet. So the first one is, did I read left or left to right? Sorry, not right to left. I don't know <laughs> what I was thinking. So did I read left to right? Yes or no. Did I read top to bottom? Yes or no. Did I practice reading fluency? Yes or no. And then can I retell the story? Yes or no. So basically that retelling the story is tying in with the se sequencing because you're retelling the story of this. So if you listen to it first and then you do this and then you talk through it like what Miss Becky did, you're retelling that story. Um, so that's extremely important too. Yep. Um, did I look carefully at the pictures? Well, that's your job. That was the task we gave you at the end of circle time to go on um, for the pancakes for breakfast story. You're, you know, looking at those pictures and you're determining what that story is by looking at the pictures. And then did you share a story with a friend? Well, that was another, you know, that was another thing that you had to do with that. You were to tell, have that conversation with your parent, your grandparent, your aunt, uncle, whoever's helping you with it, or even how, um, like Miss Becky could even, you know, talk to me about it. If, you know, we pulled it up right now, she could tell me her version. And then if I looked at it, I would probably tell her something completely different because we look at things different, just like you guys look at things different. Um, so that's all that the checklist uh, says. So if it's just something, just like, just something to keep in mind and just to like skim through real quick, check yes, no for all of them. And you can even probably update this as time goes on. I'd say like every couple of months because everybody's changing every single day um, with their learning. Right. So it'd be good to maybe do it like, say you do it in pencil, mark them and maybe in three months, Go with like a blue pen and then check where you are, where the child is in three months. Then three months after that, take black pen and check through it. So you can see the progress all on the same sheet. Yes, that's a they're that's great tools as they're beginning to learn to read. Mm -hmm. So um, if you need some more help with the sequencing, there's a great website that they've given us. It's called imaginationsoup.net. Um, slash picture book teach sequencing beginning middle and end and it's probably in your packet so um, if you still need some more help with that just go ahead on there or reach out to us and we'll be here to help you so we're going to end this video with a story that we're familiar with we've already read it twice that's right Wemberly <laughs> worried and we talked about being worried at circle time with Miss Becky. Yes. And um, if I remember correctly, I think I mentioned what really worried. <laughs> it's a really good story.
so here we go, friends. Wimberly worried about everything. Actually, you know what would actually be really good, friends? Since we have already read the spice, and this is our third time reading the story, that if you guys remember some of the words, feel along to read along with me. That'd actually be really helpful. Big things, little things, and things in between. Wimberly worried in the morning, she worried at night, and she worried throughout the day. You worry too much, said her mother. When you worry, I worry, said her father. Worry, 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 said grandmother. Too much worry. At home, Wimberly worried about the tree in the front yard and the crack in the living room wall and the noise that the radiators made. At the playground, Wimberly worried about the chains on the swing, the bolts on the side, and the bars on the jungle gym. And always, she worried about her doll pedal. Don't worry, said her mother. Don't worry, said her father. But Wimberly worried. She worried, worried, and worried. When Wimberly was especially worried, she rubbed Petal's ears. Wimberly worried that if she didn't stop worrying, Petal would have no ears left at all. That's pretty silly. Yeah. <laughs> On her birthday, Wimberly, Wimberly worried that no one would come to her party. See, said her mother, there was nothing to worry about. But then Wimberly worried that there wouldn't be enough cake. On Halloween, Wimberly worried that there would be too many butterflies in the neighborhood parade. See, said her father, there was nothing to worry about. But then Wimberly worried because she was the only one. You worry too much, said her mother. When you worry, I worry, said her father. Worry, 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 said grandmother. You worry too much. Soon, Wimberly had a new worry, school. Wimberly worried about the start of school more than anything she had ever worried about before. By the time the first day arrived, Wimberly had a long list of worries. What if no one else has spots? What if no one else wears stripes? What if no one else brings it all? What if the teacher is mean? What if the room smells bad? What if they make fun of my name? What if I can't find the bathroom? What if I hate snack? And what if I have to cry? Don't worry, said my mother. Don't worry, said her father, but one really worried. She worried and worried and worried. She worried all the way there. While Wimberly's parents talked to the teacher, Mrs. Peachum, Wimberly looked around the room. Then Mrs. Peachum said, Wimberly, there's someone I think you should meet. Her name was Jewel. She was standing by herself. She was wearing stripes. She was holding a doll. At first, Wimberly and Jewel just peeked at each other. This is Petal, said Wimberly. This is Niblet, said Jewel. Petal waved, Niblet waved back. Hi, said Petal. Hi, said Niblet. I rub her ears, said Wimberly. I rub her nose, said Jewel. Throughout the morning, Wimberly and Jewel sat side by side and played together whenever they could. Petal and Niblet sat side by side too. Wimberly worried, but no more than usual, and sometimes even less. But before Wimberly knew it, it was time to go home. Come back tomorrow, called Mrs. Peachum. As the students walked out the door, Wimberly turned around and waved. I will, she said, don't worry. And there they are, all happy. The end. So I am kind of glad we got to read that again for the third time because it's a really good story and it's packed full of emotions. So it's a really good example of the different emotions that we've been talking about. So that's all we have for this video. Stay tuned because it's going to get pretty fun. Yes. <laughs> so we can't wait. We'll see you soon, friends. Bye, friends.